Okay, welcome back. This is video number four, and we're going to talk about the URL structure. Now, this is something that has changed slightly in the last decade, but it hasn't changed drastically. Now, before we discuss what you should use in terms of a domain name and your URL structure, let's discuss why this is important. You see, when Google and other search engines try to figure out what your website is all about, they look at your website as a whole. They're not just going to look at your URL structure, your domain name, or your categories or your page name. They're going to look at everything as a whole. Plus, in addition to that, they're going to look at how people interact with your content and if it that that is true. Now, part of that is what appears in the URL. A search engine friendly URL structure can actually go a long way. Not only will it help the search engines figure out what your page is all about, it's also going to help a human visitor understand what the page is what. And that means that keywords still matter, but you have to be careful not to keyword stuff your URLs. And by keyword stuff, what I mean by that is you're putting too many of the same keywords in the same area. In other words, back in the day when Google started, for example, you literally could keyword stuff a page and get ranked really, really quick. But now Google has become much smarter. Their bots and intelligence have become smarter. So that's a big no-no. Don't do that. And I'm going to show you in just a minute why if you use certain domain names, that can have a drastic impact on that. So let's talk about domain names. So what should you name your domain name? Should you use an exact match domain, meaning that the keyword is in the domain or should you use a brand name? Well, there's a big debate that using a keyword in the domain name will actually get you ranked higher. That actually worked back in the day. Sometimes it still works today and there's really no right or wrong answer. Literally at the end of the day, we don't know. Nobody knows what Google wants. In fact, uh, what we found now is that there, there's so many exact match domains and so many people that are using keywords in their domain names that it actually might help and it might not. And that's why you need to make sure that you don't look at one element, but you look at the whole website as a whole. So yeah, that was quite popular maybe five years ago, something like this, yourkeyword.com. So maybe scuba diving masks.com if you were trying to rank on scuba diving masks or best scuba diving masks or best survival kit.com. And that used to work and sometimes still does. So we can't really say for sure that if it doesn't or it does, we've noticed that it does, but we, really can't say. But if you haven't noticed, Google really likes brands. They love brands. And the reason why they love brands is because that's because brands are here to stay. If you look at a brand, it becomes a culture and it becomes, it's got a following. And that's why Google loves brands. Something like this, yourbrandname.com. Now Google is quite smart and has robots that know that people are trying to keyword stuff or game the system in terms of domain names or domains plus the URL structure. Now we've had success with brand names. So we lean towards that as the long-term view, but then again, exact match keyword domain names work well for some other people as well. So we can't say for sure that if, if it's not going to work. So at the end of the day, it's really up to you, but what I'm going to show you in just a minute, will reveal to you why using a brand name will actually help you, especially in preventing you from creating duplicate or keyword stuffing in the URL structure. So the URL structure looks like this, www.yourdomain.com slash category slash your dash page dash name. And that could be anything depending on how you go about naming that. And I'll show you that in WordPress, but we're just talking about the basic fundamentals right now. So let's say, for example, that you're trying to rank on red shoes. The problem with naming your domain name, redshoes.com is this. Let's say, for example, that you have a category 
that is red shoes, blue shoes, yellow shoes, brown shoes. But that one category that's red shoes and you have a product called Big Red Shoes, it ends up looking like this, www.redshoes.com slash red dash shoes slash big dash red dash shoes. So you see what I mean here? You've got red shoes, red shoes, and red shoes three times in a row. That's not a good sign because what that is is keyword stuffing. Now, this isn't good because it looks like you're trying to game the system when in reality you might not be. But let's say, for example, that your brand name is Super Fast Feet. And as silly as that sounds, that's something that just came to my mind and it'll make more sense. And the product name is Big Shoes. Now, I know that's not great, but hold on. It would look something like this, www.superfastfeet.com slash red dash shoes slash big dash shoes. So big shoes is a type of red shoes, but it belongs to the brand name super fast feet or the e-commerce store or the digital store or the local store. So by doing that now, you see red shoes only shows up once. Now by using a brand name, you have the potential of selling other things. If you just do redshoes.com, you're, you're stuck with only red shoes, right? But with super fast feet, you could cover shoes, you could cover slippers, you could cover socks, you could cover a variety of different things. You could even cover lifestyle of running, exercise, and all of that. So brands, not only does it help you with your URL structure, but it also helps you diversify and expand what your website could potentially be about. Now, in this case, the word shoes shows up twice, but that's okay. Do you see what I mean here and why brands actually help you avoid keyword stuffing? Now, another tip is to make sure that your URL is no longer than 90 characters long. Okay, so first things first, go ahead and log into your WordPress site, as you can see here. And then what you want to do is access the permalinks to make sure that your URL structure is search engine friendly. So what you need to do is to the left hand side, go to settings, permalinks, and then we'll get to here. Now at this point, you're going to want to choose post name, click post name, click save down here, and that's it. So what this is going to do is every time you create a post in a page, it's going to title the actual post and page and put it in the URL. You see, if you choose a numeric or if you choose anything like this, then when Google comes to your page, they're not necessarily going to know. They're going to look for the body text, but the URL structure is, is by no means search engine friendly. So I can, as you can see here, the plain version is just question mark P equals one, two, three. As a human being as well, you don't really know what that is, right? So choose post name, click save, and that is the reason. Now, if you go on to a post or a page, so if you go to posts and choose a post or a page, this is what it's gonna look like. So when you create a post and page, like for example, right here, this article here that says 10 different places to find credible freelancers online, if you have it here, you want to make sure that that is in your permalink. Permalink is the URL structure. So we click on edit here. We can see that it says 10 different places to find credible freelancers online. So what you want to do is obviously we can't change the domain name, but we're going to put the title in here and you want to put dashes in between the words. And when you're done, click on OK click update and that's it. So that's as easy as it gets in terms of editing the URL structure. Now, of course you can add them into categories. So if you're, you have a category, let's say in this case, we have freelancers, the category could be freelancing sites. And then you could have maybe 10 different posts on freelancing sites. So that as a human being, you know that we're looking at this and it's under the category of freelancing. And you can create categories by going under categories and click on add new category and creating that there. And then make sure that poster page is checked 
for that category, click update and you're good to go. And that's it.